All right, uh, so we are going to be doing some T-charts today. And so T-chart is a strategy that helps you break down the um, atoms and elements that are in a compound or formula. So I've got three different examples here for you today. We've got baking soda, hydrogen sulfide, and zinc. And so we are going to do elements and atoms and T-charts for all of those. So let's get started. All right, so um, the first thing you do, you just take a look at your uh, look at your formula and see what we're working with here. And so we have some we have some elements. We need to count them. One trick I do is I count the capital letters. The capital letters tell me how many elements we have. So I've got I've got a capital N, I got a capital H, I got, got a capital C and O. So the capital N and little A is sodium, and then we have H, and we have C, and we have O for a total of four elements, okay? So let's start counting. Remember, there's no coefficient, so if there's no number here, we assume one. We have one Na, we have one H, we have one C, and we have three O's for a total of six atoms in this uh, molecule, and in this case, compound as well. So that one's done. Let's move on to hydrogen sulfide. Right here, we, oh, we have four as our coefficient, so that changes some things. We get to do a little math here, which is gonna be fun. Um, so we have H and we have S for a total of two elements. Now we have to hippity hoppity distribute that property. So we got four times two, which is eight hydrogen, and four times one is going to be four sulfur for a total of 12 atoms here. There's a trick that you can also do as well. If you're not 100% sure and you just want to be clear and make no mistakes, you can always just put ones if you wish. Like here, you could do a little one there, if you wanted. So we know that we have eight hydrogen atoms, we have four sulfur atoms, total of two elements, total of eight atoms. Um, before we jump into the last one, one of the reasons why I love to do T-chart for every single question I ever get in science is because you have pretty much have all your answers here. The science star question may say, how many total uh, oxygen atoms are there in two molecules of baking soda? So as you can see, that would change some things. They only have one written here, but in the word question, maybe they say, maybe they have two in the formula. So what you can do here is you can, um, you can multiply all of this by two, and that would give you two, 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 and six for a total of 12 in this case, if there happened to be a two there. Anyway, just a little bit more if um, you run into that scenario. Let's do the last one now. We have zinc. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide it over, just like so, okay? Zinc, so elements, we have Zn, we have N, and we have O. So we have three Zn's here. We have, well, let's really look at this. We have one N, okay, times two will give me two n's times three give me six. So let's do the o's. We have three o's times two will give me six times three will give me 18. So 18, 24, 25, 26, 27, and three. So once again, that is how you would break down a formula that actually had a parentheses in here. 
And so always remember that if you have a subscript attached to the parentheses, that subscript goes to each element in, within the parentheses. So in this case, let's go inside the parentheses first and know that we have one N and three O's. This needs to be multiplied by that two. So three times two, two times one. Then you take those results and then we make sure that we distribute the property after the fact. So we have to do what's in the parentheses first, know how many atoms we have, and then multiply it all by the three. And that's how you get three total elements and 27 total atoms when you have three molecules of zinc. All right, guys, that's it. That's how you do T-charts. Good luck on your practice.